What's up guys, this is Central Florida Prepper. Uh, today we will be doing voiceover for the video. Mainly because I look like crap. I was up almost all night. Um, I was introduced to a new interactive map. And I was playing around with that thing all night long. And it's something that we will be implementing in our preparedness plans. Uh, this is a nuclear disaster map. Basically, uh, you type in the kiloton amount of a nuclear weapon. You type in whatever city you want it to detonate in. It gives you a educated guess of death, injuries, blast radius, etc and fallout projections very cool um, so yeah definitely stick around in the video because I will be showing that on here now I came across this uh, through full spectrum survival like I said before I am subscribed to their Facebook I mean yeah I'm subscribed to Facebook too I am subscribed to the YouTube channel. I've been subscribed to them for a very long time. Um, I'm also subscribed to their Patreon page. And this was one of those little gems that they put in their Patreon page. They always do little reports uh, that YouTube never sees. They go straight, straight to their Patreon. And, uh, you know, they got different ranges you can buy into on Patreon. I'm actually just at the $1 a month patreon member and I still get amazing amount of information um, yeah so definitely you know check them out you know, definitely check out their YouTube channel and for you know it's only a buck for a patreon uh, for a whole month you know I highly recommend them I really do so before I did this video I actually posted and sent a request to Brad who he's runs uh, full spectrum survival and I wanted to make sure it was okay that I did a video on this uh, interactive map and he gave me the go ahead he said you know he didn't have a problem with that at all so here it is hope you all enjoy it all right guys so this is the nuke map um, I came across this yesterday and started playing around with it and I really like it. It helps open up my eyes to the dangers that I was not fully expecting from nuclear weapons. Now, of course, they're dangerous. I knew that much, but I wasn't exactly sure fallout projections and things like that I had a rough idea about it but you know I just started playing around with this thing so I am in Apopka Florida but one of the first things I wanted to check out was the eastern seaboard and the reason I want to check this out because Russia has the 25 megaton czar bomb TSAR bomba and when you break that down to kilotons, it comes to 25,000. So, you just uh, type in the city, hit the go button, then you type in your yield, and which I've already preset to the big one, and then you click the de detonate. And you watch the counter rise. Okay, estimated fatalities. Now, I believe this is immediate fatalities. I don't believe this is radiation um, fatalities or injuries. I believe this is the immediate blast injuries. Because if you zoom out and look at the fallout, path of this thing. It's all up the eastern seaboard. I 
Now that's the 25 megaton Russian bomb. Now, we don't really know for sure exactly who has what. I mean, I'm sure the government does, but we as civilians do not. But um, the research I've done says on average, just the U.S. military nuclear weaponry, average size nuclear weapons is a 600 kiloton to 22,000 kiloton. Now, when I typed in Orlando earlier, I wanted to go with, and I don't think Orlando is going to be a target from Russia. I believe it's going to be more of a target from a terrorist group. And Fat Boy was, no, I'm not talking, oh, Fat Man. I said Fat Man. Fat Boy is me. Uh, Fat Man was I can't get a definite answer some say I've seen some at 15 kilotons and then I've seen some sites say 20 to 22 kilotons so let's let's just go with a 20 kiloton all right good number let's just say they got that thing in on a truck We'll hit our detonate button. We'll zoom out. And our initial blast deaths are 23, almost 24,000. Now, if you scroll down, this thing here will show you information on the radius of the fireball, radiation radius, thermal radiation, and it'll also break down your fallout rads all right by the shade of color so we will take a look at the fallout projected path of a 20 kiloton and it does make it out to the ocean looks like it's uh, in between Ponce Inlet and Oak Hill now I believe that they actually do take into account that these are high wind patterns in the upper atmosphere compared to our normal wind patterns here low to the ground um, which is always seems like here in central florida is always at a south eastern blow but the higher altitudes the wind, the wind uh, pattern is going to be different but now when this fallout starts dropping that's when you're going to see this stuff moving around a lot more it's not going to keep a straight path like this uh, when, when fallout actually starts dropping to the ground the lighter particles that's when it's going to spread now that first bit of major blast the radiation from that the radio uh, radioactive material that's going to fall straight from there the larger stuff but yeah i want to see what a 20 kiloton nuke was going to do See, we're over here in Apopka, south of Apopka. I'm not going to zoom in dead on my address. It's just a general vicinity there. And like I said, we have a lot of lakes. There's a lot of water out here. Um, but all this water definitely has to be purified and stuff like that. That's so why I'm working on that, that uh, distiller. And I might actually be purchasing... A distiller. Um, we had uh, one of our subscribers send a link out for one. It was about $60 on Amazon. So right now I'm figuring in the cost of copper tube and things like that. See if it's viable to just buy that or make my own. I do know if I make my own, I could put it in a coal pit and uh, produce steam that way. But I don't want to buy a whole bunch of stuff and not work. And I'm, I mean that with the copper tube and you know my idea of making one. Obviously the one that he had put up for the link is a good one. Alright, back to the map guys. So, seeing that that is not really affecting Apopka, I want to check out Tampa. 
because Tampa is southwest of me. And we have it on a 20 kiloton again. All right. And that's a decent size for a, a moving vehicle. All right, well, it misses south of Popka, but that's subject to change. You never really know. All right, let's just say that we got a good old, let's say we got that small 600 kilo, kiloton the U.S. likes to carry. And they got bigger ones, but that's just an average size. We'll detonate in Tampa again. Eighty five thousand an initial blast. And we'll check out this fallout pattern. Oh yeah, it got us. But look how far this fallout stretches. And again, when it starts getting into this stuff here, yeah, that's still high altitude projections. Now our the way our winds and stuff blow here in central Florida, this is going to change a great deal with the finer particles. Uh, so, something to think about. And while I have y'all's attention, let's go ahead and switch over to our disaster map. There's a link for this one again, and I will put the links up in the description. We use this map just to keep track of disasters, things like that that are going on um, they keep it updated pretty good and there are some some of the older disasters they keep up for a couple of days that's when they're still dealing with it or still ongoing like the measles and all that stuff and we just had a earthquake in Hawaii by the way I got an alert a minute ago. 2.1. Alright, it's a small one. Oh, that's Alaska there. Oh, yeah, that's an alert that's popped up. I was trying to click on Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii had a 2.2. Funny, I just had this alert like five minutes ago. I was working on another video trying to, and I decided to redo it. And then I just got the Alaska alert. Funny how all that still connected there um, but yeah you can just uh, click on anything and click the uh, more details it'll bring up the report That's minor class shallow depth People do not feel any earth movement. Because there's a 3.1. So yeah, that is a the disaster map. We use uh, this map to alter our preps. We definitely... Our main reason that we have this map here that we use... It's because we try to keep track of the uh, Ebola and other weird exotic diseases that are um, on the move. Let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, yeah, this is probably Ebola. August 1st, 2018. Yeah, still dealing with this. It's got to be the Ebola. Dead persons, 1,500. Yep, Ebola. Infected persons, 2,200. 
So those are the maps that we are using right now, uh, mainly because it is a digital and not digital interactive map, I should say. Um, so we can actually plan ahead on our bug outs and our bug ins. Okay, you know, if we got ideas of what these size bombs are, and like I said, it might not even hit anywhere near Florida, but it might hit other parts of the country, and it might be in the way of our bug out travel. So definitely something to take a look at, guys. Um, anyway, like and subscribe if y'all haven't already done that, and I appreciate everybody's help. Um, I get a lot of great comments from everybody here. We truly have an awesome uh, community here. Last night we broke 350 subscribers. So thank you all for that. I, I was really excited. It was about, oh, I don't know. It, it wasn't too late when I, when I got the notification on that one. But yeah, I am very excited for that. And I do appreciate everyone here. So hopefully y'all stick with me and we'll see how far we can push this channel. Y'all take care.